And now it's time for the puppet packaging to birds of a feather session about building packages for puppets into Debian. Hello everyone. So this session will be about packaging puppet itself, uh, more specifically puppet six and seven and probably about uh, all what's around, including maybe Puppet modules as well. Uh, so Utkarsh is coming, he just told me on IRC. So we'll be three in this session, Elena will not join. Uh, so um, we've done a lot of work already in order to package Puppet 6 for Bullseye. Uh, it's about 55 packages were built according to the list that uh, Luis wrote on his blog. Unfortunately, we didn't make it because uh, there's a, a few bits that uh, were missing. Maybe Luis, you can, Louis, you can, you can uh, tell exactly what was going on with uh, Puppet Closure. You, you know more the details than I do. Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the main problems we had uh, during the, the whole packaging thing uh, was that uh, the new Puppet server is running in Clojure. And uh, while a lot of packages were already in Debian, uh, we needed to package a, much, a bunch more. And um, eventually, one of the uh, roadblocks we hit was that we needed um, JRuby in Debian. And sadly, JRuby wasn't in, in, uh, in Buster. Uh, but for Bullseye, the package wasn't working fine, and nobody was really maintaining that package, and it's, it's a pretty huge package. And one of the problems with packaging JRuby in Debian is that JRuby itself is about, I don't know, four or three uh, major Ruby versions uh, behind Ruby. Uh, so in the past, what happened is that uh, JRuby and the version of Ruby in Debian were matching, so libraries could be reused for JRuby. Uh, but sadly, one of the problems was that the Ruby team uh, followed upstream Ruby quite quite well, and uh, JRuby, uh, even upstream JRuby, was left behind. Uh, so to package JRuby in Debian, you would need to package a lot of uh, old dependencies that JRuby Ruby dependencies that JRuby needs to work. Uh, so it's it's quite a big package. It's quite a uh, complex problem, and. Um, uh, it was the main roadblock. Uh, pretty much everything is actually packaged in Debian at the moment to for Puppet Server, um, but the only thing, the only piece missing would be JRuby. Uh, and once that, that one, once that is done, Puppet Six and Puppet Seven could be uploaded to the archive without a problem. So, if I understand well, we would need to upload dependencies for JRuby that uh, are already gone from Debian. That's as far as I understand. I'm I'm really not a Ruby dev. I think Utkash could uh, comment on that uh, a bit more when he'll join, since he's uh, one of the Ruby maintainers in Debian. Um, but yeah, as far as I understand, we would need to package some dependencies for JRuby, or at least try to have some shims in place or see what breaks. Uh, but it's a really complex package. Uh, me and Utkash worked a bit on trying to fix it. Uh, I wasted a bunch of time just building the package. It takes about 30 minutes. Uh, so just that makes the whole developing process really painful. Um, but I Let's say I, I fixed about 75% of the problems we had with JRuby. Uh, and there's about maybe 25% left and some big, large problems about uh, proper maintainership because we need somebody to take care of that package make sure that there's security releases when they are because it's it's quite a big piece and um, uh, fix the rest of the packaging yeah uh, just so that everybody understands what's going on uh, when you download puppet server from upstream that just bundle everything it's like all the closure your libraries even yeah. the interpreter so yeah. It's kind of very, very ugly and absolutely not the way uh, Debian is supposed to be working. So we did the hard work of doing all the closure part and that JRuby interpreter 
uh, which which is it's a Ruby interpreter written in Clojure, right, or in Java? No, it's a Ruby interpreter written in Java, and then we're packaging a shim in Clojure that runs on the JVM that calls JRuby to call Ruby code. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's <laughs> terrible, uh, but the problem is that Puppet being written in Clojure still needs to load some legacy Ruby code. And uh, as you as you know, the Puppet agent is still written in, um, in the Ruby, sort of makes that Clojure needs to talk to Ruby somehow. And the way upstream does it is through this complicated shim going through a closure, the JVM, JRuby, and then Ruby. Which is uh, quite so ugly. Do you have an, um, an idea of the amount of code we'd have to do uh, in terms of Ruby packages? Would that be from Ruby gems or what? Uh, maybe Akash can answer that. As far as I understand, one of the problems we had with JRuby was the fact that Ruby versions and Debian, like actual Ruby, is much farther. Uh, and then JRuby is like slacking behind, and a bunch of the dependencies and the libraries and the gems that JRuby needs are not no longer or are too far ahead, and we need to repackage a bunch of things. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, I think from the Ruby point of view, everything's everything should work, but when it comes to JRuby, uh, we're going to soon be uploading Ruby 3.0, which is like the new West Ruby we have. Uh, and I see that uh, JRuby has 9.2.19.0 released, which is Ruby 5.x compatible. Uh, but I'm not sure if it supports Ruby 3 at the moment. And that is going to be a huge pain for both, like, you know, for Puppet, for JRuby, and for the Ruby team as well, because as uh, Paul had earlier mentioned that it no longer works, which is correct, because if you just invoke the simplest of commands, um, it would just crash there. Um, so I think like maybe whilst we're doing the 3.0 transition, uh, I could take a look at uh, JRuby, but I can't promise anything because it's, it's, it's a bit too ugly and a bit too huge as a package at the moment. And then, then there's no proper maintenance. So even if I could like do the, update ones, it's not it's not gonna be maintained properly. Like as I see it, there's nobody who's gonna be who who is willing to like you know uh step up and maintain JRuby properly. So I think that's gonna be a bit of a problem there. Uh one possible solution is like the traditional uh, it's not traditional at all. Like it's something that we don't want to do but we have to do is the embedding uh of the Ruby code like the Ruby whole Ruby interpreter like Ruby 2.5 uh in jruby which is like a huge tedious stuff and something that we might not want to do but then i see that is the only possible option that we have to to make jruby work otherwise uh it's always going to be the same story that because we have ruby release each december and we try to upload by january the newest version unless there's a freeze for example this time we just uploaded post freeze so we're almost uh, updated, updating the Ruby interpreter uh, as soon as there's an upstream release. But JRuby still needs a lot of catching up because there are APIs and other things which Java, it, because it depends on Java and like the communication between Java and Ruby is a bit of, uh, you know, a bit complex and stuff like that. So JRuby actually needs time, which in turn uh, causes the whole problem. And like the JRuby Mm -hmm. is uh, matching Ruby 2.5. So that's a l like ages ago, right? Uh, that is correct. 2.7. Uh, we had 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and 3.0 now. Did so you, that is like four years old. And like, do you know uh, if upstream is, is willing to catch on and, and get compatible with 3.0? They, they, just, they just can't for now. They're, they've been working on it for a while, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've looked upstream and I talked to a bunch of people and it's it's... They're working on it. It'll, it'll take some time. So as as Utkar said, I think the, the wisest thing to do if we're to somehow salvage JRuby or somebody is to do it uh, is actually to embed all the libraries we need. A bunch of packages in Debian do it. It's not the cleanest way to do it, but yeah. I, I don't see another way to have JRuby package in Debian otherwise. I still I mean, so the JRuby people want to catch up. It's just that they they are in so much of technical debt and manpower issues that they cannot write them at the moment. So essentially they, they want to, but they just can't. 
All right. But yeah, the I mean, if the, the main issue is still that somebody needs to package JRuby and maintain it, and it's quite a lot of work. So that's, I mean, I, I wrote a, a blog post after working a bit on uh, closure packaging in Debian, and one of the conclusions is that if, if like enterprises or if somebody wants to see Puppet in Debian, somebody needs to step up and make sure that this package is maintained properly. And it's it's not just something that's like somebody alone and with some, with some free time can do or hardly. It'll, it, it's, a, it's a large task and it's a lot of work. And that person needs to be like, familiar with Java, with the whole Java ecosystem and the Ruby one. So it's, it's like a weird mix of, of skills that not really people don't have, or at least uh, Ruby people not really don't like Java. And, yeah, <laughs> there's Java, there's Ruby, and then there's closure bits as well. But now, like the new topic. Well, the, the closure so. bits we can take. I can take care, care of. It's it's a shim. It's it's not a, a it's a small package that just does the shim between JRuby and closure. Uh, but the main part is really JRuby itself. Yeah, I see. Okay, but I can take care of the Ruby side of JRuby, but somebody needs to take care of the J. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't have enough experience with Java uh, packaging myself. Do, do you? Um, and it's it's, like... a, it's a complex packaging too. It uses like a, a ton of different. It's not a straightforward Maven build. Uh, as far as like look, it it does like yeah. ten thousand things, and it's it's a complex package. Like even on the Java side, it's complex. I wonder if uh, we can. Oh, we cannot. We cannot embed JRuby inside. Stop it, right? Because no, I that's, that's, we also yeah. need to embed Ruby as well. That was one of the uh, the things I wanted to do, and uh, people told me it, that was going too far. And yeah. it, it's something that I might try to do on my side, like myself, on a separate like repository, like uh, some some private repository, trying to build Puppet server uh, using the upstream binaries that JRuby publishes to see if everything works and if it's usable and to test our packages and DB in the closure side. Uh, but I, I don't think it, it would be good for production machines. People want to run straight. Yeah. And then would that, that's probably a match for uploading that to fast track, no? Yeah, we could like, so uh, at the moment, I think 2.5, even 2.7. So we, we have lots of different things and we can upload to fast track. Uh, although the purpose of fast track was to bring faster, fast moving packages uh, to like, you know, backport them. For example, 2.7 is in bullseye, but we backported it to, I mean, I did not, Praveen did it to Buster. So uh, that is like the intention of uh, fast track, like the, exactly the opposite way, like not the backporting the slow moving things and like, you know, things that rely on old stuff, but uh, on the faster stuff. So, okay. uh, but we can, we can do something about that uh, in like, uh, fast track, we, we can create a new suit, suit for that, uh, but I'm not sure how much is, is it going to be worth it. So, yeah. Um, so that's about Puppet Server. I think another piece that's missing that shouldn't be blocked by anything is the agent. Um, I think uh, trying to work on the agent and making sure that the agent stays at least up to date and experimental would be nice. Uh, it would make uh, maybe for a better experience once uh, Puppet Server lands in uh, maybe in backports or everything. Because if, yeah, this, the, the, the agent is still written in Ruby and shouldn't, I think you worked a bit on it uh, as you go. Yeah, so it's uploaded uh, to Experimental. I did that uh, quite a long time ago. So we have the agent 6.16 in Experimental. The problem is, if I upload it to unstable, then it just breaks. Yeah, I don't think we should upload anything to unstable, but uh, trying to keep up with experiment in experimental would be nice. Uh, maybe even look at packaging like the agent puppet agent seven, because I think that's the uh, the version people are mostly at at the moment upstream. They're even talking about puppet eight at the moment. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh. By any chance, are there any plans of uh, upstream Puppet server to get rid of JRuby and stuff like that? I, I doubt it. They're not the most responsive upstream. 
Um, sometimes I report bu bugs and it takes them, I don't know, six months to close little trivial things. I don't think they really care about Debian at all. So I doubt it. Yeah, but just... is, is JRuby working uh, in other places like Jeff? Yeah. Is it just a Debian problem? Well, they're using the, the upstream packaging and how, how Puppet Server is, is built is it just downloads the, the JRuby jar with all the, everything in this bundled and everything. So JRuby upstreams make sure that JRuby works and it still works mm -hmm. for that legacy Ruby code that matches that those libraries. Mm -hmm. um, there are security bugs for sure and everything, but that's the way it works. And that's the way to Puppet upstream packages thing. It just pulls everything from Nathan and just uh, that, that, that's probably their answer, which is, oh, we don't care whatever they do in Debian. We have our packages and people should use that. Though what people probably don't realize is how it's made upstream, which makes me make, makes us just scream, right? Yeah, one of the like, often issues I had trying to build packages in Debian is that a bunch of things that's been deprecated upstream, right. but they're still on Maven and it still builds on the Puppet side, but they don't see all these weird dependencies that are, are insecure, that don't build, that don't exist, that haven't been maintained for like six years. And I had to package like deprecated stuff upstream in Debian to build things for Puppet. Uh, again, like, I, I opened bug for that, but they're like, oh, well, you know, it's still on Maven and we'll eventually try to migrate away from it, but no promises. Uh, so it, all the secret sauce is hidden and nobody really cares. Like this CLJX thing, which is the exactly. since 2016, exactly, yeah. and they know about it and they don't care. <laughs> yeah, and that's on the server side. You know what? The server side is not too, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not that terrible. But if you look at the agent, the agent packaging upstream is, is horrible, it's horrendous. They're, they're vendoring OpenSSL in the uh, in the agent package they're, they're deploying. So you cannot install OpenSSL from Debian because they're rendering their own version that's clearly isn't maintained properly. It's, it's uh, yeah. Nobody should use upstream's packages, at least for the agent. Right. So then if we say we just give up uh, for the moment on, on the bet uh, six, but we still want the agent because of what you just said. Then maybe we should just remove all the puppet five things from unstable and just upload the agent. Then I think it would. Uh, well, I think first of all, before removing anything, uh, Apollon should be consulted because, uh, as far as I know, he's still maintaining puppet five in Debian. Like he's still doing security releases and looking at bugs and and look at these things. Um, so he's still maintaining Puppet 5. Um, yeah, but it's a maintained upstream. Like they, they, it is. they it said is. 5 is gone and it, we don't do security things on it. I agree. Um, I think it would break a uh, lot of machines in a bunch of places if we were to remove it from stable. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. I think it's somebody we should maybe talk about uh, on the mailing list and be sure that everybody's consulted about it. Um, having talked to Apollon, he think it's fine. He thinks it's fine to have Puppet 5 for the whole Bullseye release in Debian, even though Upstream doesn't maintain it anymore. I kind of agree. I think it's fine. It's working well. And we may uh, just continue to maintain it. Though looking forward to Bookworm, we have to do something. We can't just leave Puppet 5 again for Bookworm. Yeah, uh, agreed, agreed. So there at least should be some some bugged open on unstable in Puppet, making sure that they won't ever reach testing, that uh, it, it shouldn't. And I think we have some time for um, for Bookworm. I think we'll be able to migrate away eventually from that. Um, we'll see. But yeah, the main problem is still that somebody needs to step up and put pour some money or something to hire somebody to take care of JRuby. Uh, Otherwise, it won't happen. Yeah, like JRuby cannot happen uh, with volunteers' time, honestly. Like, you know, it needs lots of uh, mental patience as well, like, because the failures are going to be uh, horrible. Uh, and, uh, and if you know anybody that's that's willing to do that, I think some companies are ready to put that money and pay for it. I mean, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation hired me for a bunch of time to 
pi puppet, pa to package Puppet and Debian. And uh, they were ready to continue paying me and uh, money was flowing and everything. It's just that I, I'm doing some other stuff. I'm teaching, so I, I couldn't. But uh, if you know anybody who's interested in who has those skills, I'm sure that people uh -huh. like the Wikimedia Foundation could be interested in paying for this kind of work. Sure. Uh, another thing that we can talk about, JRB, is like the in, in the Java team buff or like Android team, which is like close to Java, but not Java really. Uh, so if I don't know if Java team buff is really a thing at this DevCon, but maybe we should talk to them if they're still interested or if they can help at least if they're not interested. Um, I think like that. What about Canonical? Do you think they would like to pay for it? <laughs> I don't uh, know. I mean, I'm not sure if they care about Puppet at the moment, but I can ask around um, and let you know. But at the moment, I don't think they care about so much about Puppet. Because if they wanted to, they would have done so by now. They would have got the latest Puppet already. Um, but since I think that's not the case, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's, that, if it's the case or if it's not. But as far as I know, they don't have the new Puppet and they don't really care. Okay. So like maybe one way of having it is Infomaniac becomes the customer of Canonical asking new puppet, and then that could happen. <laughs> I think like 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 Louis said, the, the the challenge is probably more to find people with the skills rather yeah. than finding how to 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 sponsor it. Yeah, that's right. Sure. If, yeah. If somebody comes up and is like, "Yeah, I'd like to do this, but I need money." chances are we could probably find some way to finance it. So maybe maybe we should just write about it and try to find someone or something. Maybe ask the Java team if somebody has can be hired. One thing that could be done is um, trying to see if uh, somebody upstream at JRuby would be willing to take on, take on that kind of work. They'd be in a good position to actually know the project and know security releases and that kind of stuff. They'd know the project and know how to build. And uh, they would have to learn some Debian experience, but they could be coached and, and help through that. It's not that far and that crazy. Uh, so that could be an option, trying to write on the JRuby mailing list to see if somebody would be ready for that. But it's sure that uh, if, we, if we knew that there was money before writing to them, it would surely help. OK. <laughs> well, I could certainly go assess. But as I like, there's no such thing as courses. I could just assist the person, but then there should be a person there who would help me walk through the Java failures, uh, because like that's that's a bit too much to debug and stuff. So an upstream person would certainly help if they agree to do that, uh, I guess. And maybe that'd be a better road to approach. I don't know, maybe. So if if there is some work to do, uh, packaging gem things or others, I think I can do that. I I can volunteer for doing some of these, but the others, like I don't I, I don't feel like I'm the right person to do it because I don't know uh, enough. Okay, like I I can take care of the Ruby side of things. Uh, I think so, as I mentioned. Uh, there should just be somebody to take the J of that whole thing. Right. And then there's lots of things involved. Like there's lots of moving parts because embedding Ruby, the whole Ruby interpreter is not a small thing to do because <clears throat> if you're running JRuby with the older Ruby, then a lot of packages won't work because they're not backwards compatible. Although Ruby 3.0 is backwards compatible, but I doubt like how much is it gonna be because Running 2.5 and 3.0 at the same time is going to be a bit of trouble, I guess. That's like yeah. three years of uh, changes, which is a lot. So how do they do upstream? They just bundle Sorry. everything. They just, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, they just yeah. bundle the libraries they need inside JRuby. It comes with all the stuff. And one of the big challenges of packaging JRuby is at the moment in Debian, a bunch of these libraries were removed and they were using the Ruby ones. Okay, okay. Uh, but that doesn't work anymore and it won't work for a few points. But what, when you say they bundle everything, you mean like everything, including any, like 
G, J, J Lib six and such things. They're everything that is Ruby is is bundled. I okay. think they're actually bundling their own Ruby interpreter, like an old version of it. All right. I think that's about it for the buff. I don't know if you have anything more to discuss, but uh, I think that we've talked about the issues and the problems. So now the world knows. <laughs> exactly. But... Like the thousand of people watching the stream at the moment knows that uh, there's a problem and that uh, money is needed to fix this problem. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is that we're going to be uploading 3.0 in maybe next month or something like that. Uh, or maybe. I mean, before the air ends for sure. And that is also going to cause some issues in Puppet world. Uh, albeit, like, I'll be around to fix them, uh, like I did last time. But I'm just a heads up that there, there are going to be issues. No. All right. Well, thanks, thanks to both of you yeah. then. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the, the work you've done. Uh, going forward, I'm I'm bullish on the fact that we're gonna have a uh, puppet eight and for bookware. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> so whenever there is there is anything I can do, I'm volunteering. But like, yeah. Uh, Let's hope that all we've done is is not for nothing. Yeah, and I've, I'm I'm still working on the closure team with, with Kash. We had a JSOC pro pro project this summer, uh, trying to make sure that the, the closure side of things are working well and that we're working on making closure packaging easier too, um, packaging actual build tool to build tools that we're missing at the moment. So I think on the closure side, things are looking well. Okay. Ciao. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.